Hi, my name is Hayden Williams Rand, and I'm a kid, and a writer, an actor, a filmmaker, a gymnast, dancer, swimmer, director, camera operator, news reporter, scientist, historian, friend, brother, researcher, cat wrangler, dog lover, mathematician, and for one brief moment, one day on the playground, a referee. My name is Hayden, and I have ADHD. ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I was first diagnosed with ADHD right after I turned four by our family doctor. I was taken to the doctor for a yearly physical. I remember I was led into a large room with a table and only one chair. I was with my parents and my brother. There was a large bookshelf and a counter. Way up on one of the shelves was a jar of lollipops. My mom was talking to my brother because he sometimes dresses in new places. And well, I decided to get a lollipop. So I started climbing and just as I reached the jar, the doctor came in and I was caught. He looked at me and and he looked at my parents and said, your son has ADHD and when you need something to help with it, let me know. I was diagnosed with ADHD, or so I was told, when I was about four or five years old. Um, but I didn't get any medication when I was a child. My mother worked in a uh, worked in a doctor's office, and from her perspective, um, seeing the mothers come in with kids wanting to get their kids medicated, she was kind of convinced the medication was more for the mothers than for the children. My son was diagnosed with ADHD in third grade, um, and I. Even though being a teacher for a long time um, and knowing that he he had inattentive kind the inattentive kind and um, I just never really thought that that it was going to be ADHD and then I had to take classes and learn what ADHD really was and I realized that I really didn't know as much about it as I thought I did um, just from being in education. I would definitely say starting around fourth grade was when I really started to notice it. So when my grades started to draw my ability to pay attention was diminishing. In kindergarten, the teachers mentioned to me that he was um, loved to run around the classroom and could never stop wiggling. And I just figured he's a normal little boy. First grade teacher said the same. Same as the second grade teacher. And I just once again thought, my husband and I thought, he's a boy. You know what? Schools are not made for boys. Um. Kindergarten went by, first grade went by, and then second grade came, and it seemed to go really well. And then third grade came, and um, it was a horrible year. And the teacher tried everything, and she was really wonderful, but he wasn't doing well. And I was, you know, all over the place, certainly in school. Uh, I didn't enjoy school. Um, starting from about probably third grade when we actually had to start, you know, sitting still in class a lot more and <clears throat> focusing on work and doing work. And it was basically that way through high school. The farther I got along in school, the harder it became. And I would definitely say it affected my grades uh, almost the instant that ADHD came by. About four months ago, uh, I was, I was uh, learning a new course. I'm an IT trainer, so there's always something new to learn. So I'm sitting in a class and I really began to notice how difficult it was to pay attention. And it felt like putting two magnets together the wrong way and as much as you might want to push on it as soon as, <clears throat> if you weren't putting maximum effort into it, it, you know, things would go ahead and slide. You know, I know I need to study, I know I need to study. What's in the kitchen? Um, and I really began to recognize it. In the fourth grade, Bobby came home one day and said to my husband, David and I, that he could not focus. And he didn't know how to pay attention in class. He noticed his mind was wandering. One minute he was looking at the board, completely engaged in the lesson, and the next thing he knew, he was staring out the window. By the time he looked around, the teacher had finished the lesson, he was completely lost. It was then that we decided that, you know what, maybe all these teachers were correct and he did have 
ADHD. I would definitely say it also affected my life with my family as well. Uh, it had me create these impulses that basically made me feel like I had to argue with whatever my parents said or I couldn't prioritize all my um, pri ugh, I couldn't prioritize all my chores or just simple tasks really. So then I started looking into different things to help um, with my family and really it didn't come to the idea that I needed medication for it until uh, I was in the car with my family this one time at night and I straight up said I wanted to end my life. I've heard this story every time I don't finish a book or forget to turn in my work, which is in my backpack, or drop something as I walk to my mom. You know, the more I think about it, that candy was a trap and I was set up. All I wanted was a lollipop! Really, I can't remember a time when I wasn't ADHD, and that might seem weird. But, you see, in my family, not being ADHD is weird. My brother has ADHD, and my dad has ADHD, and everyone feels that my aunt has ADHD, too. ADHD is often genetic, which means that it's passed in your genes by your parents. ADHD makes me different, like not finishing things I start. I like being different because I stand out. When I first got diagnosed with ADHD, we, my parents really didn't know what to do. They, I mean, they got medication for me, but they didn't know the quantity or uh, level that it sh they should have gotten me. And it took them a couple of years for them to figure out what I should have got for the proper dosage. And so I um, was like, okay, do we want to put him on medication? So it was so successful with the student in my class. I thought, sure, we'll try it. Well, for some kids, the medication goes very easily. It was not the case for my oldest son. The first medication, he became very aggressive. Um, so after six weeks, we went through withdrawals and started new meds. And this one um, made him cry all the time. And he was really sad. And um, so after six weeks, we stopped. And he went through withdrawal again. And we tried another one. And this one after two weeks, and he was having a um, terrible time on it. And I called the doctor and said, I can't handle this. Um, He's upset all the time. He's starting to pull out his hair and um, he was losing patches of hair. And uh, the doctor said, this is beyond what I can do. You guys need to see a specialist, a psychiatrist who deals with ADHD. So that's what we did. We found a psychiatrist who dealt with ADHD. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was six years old and when I turned seven, I started taking anxiety, ADHD pills ever since, uh, all, until I was eight years old, we kept on changing the pills. It was extremely difficult. It was hard for me to fo focus in class, focus, pay attention to social activities, but it was extremely hard. Once Bobby was on medication after a couple of weeks, he came home and said that he could finally focus. And now he was no longer um, looking out the window and he was able to follow along with a lesson. And I finally um, started, uh, started ADHD medication a couple of months later. Um, and, and it helps. Um, I can't say, you know, it necessarily, maybe it, I don't know if I feel it necessarily helping, but I certainly notice a difference um, again, you know, if all sorts of things are going on, if life's busy and life's always busy, that's one thing. But when, when I have the time and the need to focus my attention, it's much different on the medication than it ever was without the medication. So then after that, uh, we went to a doctor. He prescribed me medicine to help with my ADHD. Ever since then, things have been so much easier. 
I would definitely say my grades have improved. I would definitely say I'm able to focus a lot more in class. I was diagnosed with it when I was in second grade, and I had to take medication for it. The medication makes me hungry, tired, but it helps me a lot during school. Um, I I had to take uh, I. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was in second grade as well. And, and it also, and it makes me drowsy, sleepy, hungry, and tired. And it, but it helps me in school and it also, and it sometimes helps me with me around. I do well in school whenever I take my medication. I have good grades because of it, but I, sometimes my pills will not work for some reason. Do I think medication is perfect for kids with ADHD? No. Do I think it helps them? Yes. Do I feel incredibly guilty that I gave my children or one of my children medication to help with his ADHD every day? And I wonder often, is it the right thing to do? It's only as my son got older and he started to talk about what it was like to be off medication that you feel maybe you made the right decision. But it's still really, really hard. And um, you always wonder if, if things would have been different if you'd made a different decision to medicate or not to medicate. Um, but at the same time, I, I see how much happier he is and how much more successful he is in school. And I don't know if he could have been not being on medication. Stephen Tonti says that ADHD is misunderstood as an inability to focus. But it's much stranger than that. It's not a lack of focus, period. It's selecting something and giving it your full attention. Something has to grab your attention, pique your curiosity, and then you can hyper-focus. This is so me. I've started hundreds of books and almost never finished them. In fact, for my last book report, I started 10 different books, and on the weekend before my report was due, my mother forced me to finish one of the books just so I could do the report. But the exciting thing is, when I hyper-focus, I learn every fact about every president. Or memorize an entire script of Hamilton and play every part in an epic production in my living room after listening to the soundtrack only a few times. ADD affects me be because it takes me a long time to come up with an answer even though I already know the answer. I also don't like it when people look at me because it makes me nervous. Being ADD makes me constantly fiddle with things. The reason why I feel different is because everyone in this, in my class is actually paying attention and I'm the one that's moving around trying to get my comfort and they, they stay focused and I instead I'm doing something else than doing that. He has the combination ADHD where he has hyperactivity and he's really like run by a motor and also where he um, is inattentive so he daydreams or needs to be in his own world a lot so um but he's not impulsive because he's got anxiety and a lot of people don't realize that adhd people a lot of adhd people have severe anxiety and um, some of the things that we learned kind of really helped explain difficulties he was having um like one of the things is that they feel um, emotions really big. So it can seem like a little problem, but they react huge and in a classroom that can be a problem with your own son. It can be a problem where you're looking at it. Why would they act this way? But that's how they're feeling at that moment. They can't, it's just huge. Um, not to mention the organization dealing with um, their homework and dealing with their assignments and um, being successful in school is very difficult. And but one of the side effects that my ADHD pills have on me is I don't want to eat that, any, that much anymore. 
it's when I whenever I go and don't, don't whenever I don't take my pills, I feel unstable. I feel not right. I feel more chaotic. I also have a a little bit more sympathy with my older son. Uh, we've long had problems getting him to eat, and it's been because of his ADHD medication. And you know, and he just because you know he says he's just not feeling hungry, and I have the same issue. So if I don't eat before I take my medication, I literally I'll know intellectually that I need to eat. I won't be hungry until much later in the afternoon. Even though my brother and I have ADHD, we don't have the exact same type. I have the attention problem. He has what they call the combo. It means he's super hyper and can't focus. He also worries far more than I do. He had a hard time in school until he started on medication. I haven't had it hard in school, and I'm not on any medication. So if we are related and our ADHD is different, then what is it like for others? So this year I decided to go on a journey to find other people who had ADHD like me and see what it's like for them in school when they were diagnosed and discover a little more about how ADHD mind works. So when it comes to dealing um, as a school counselor with students who have ADHD, uh, it's not necessarily, I think people need to understand, teachers, staff, parents, even other students and support staff that it's not necessarily the, uh, that students don't know what is expected of them. They know what is expected of them in the classroom. They know what they need to do. It's the execution of the task that's difficult for them. And sometimes depending on whether we're dealing with impulsivity, um, reactivity or the um, hyperactivity um, or just the inattentive portion um, it's something that they are trying to control however it is out of their control so we need to teach them the skills to be able to communicate and verbalize what it is that they need at the time we also need to be more mindful of their needs meaning that a task that's simple for someone who does not have ADHD can become overwhelming very fast. So frequent breaks is important. Um, teaching them to self-regulate is important. So those coping skills come in handy. Um, also teaching them to communicate assertively, meaning that they have the tasks and necessities, the tools they need to be able to let their teachers know um, when they need to break or their teachers to recognize what it is they need at the time or that it's time for a break. Being successful in school is very difficult and as a parent you have to have constant communication and as a teacher it's made me really realize when I see those kids in class what they need. I can kind of help their parents um, find a way to, to help them be successful and I can help them be successful, giving them what they need, planning ahead, knowing they're going to maybe react in a way that's not typical, but um, I can help avoid some of those meltdowns, um, help them finish things, know that we can accommodate their assignments to make them successful. It doesn't have to look like everybody else. They just have to be, you know, successful in the end. In my classroom, I feel that I have um, a lot of patience for students that are not focused, students that are tend to be off task because um, I, I try to make my um, lessons more, more engaging and I also like to offer students a wide range of uh, learning modalities like um, instead of just writing, they can create a video or um, instead of sitting inside the classroom, maybe go outside and do a little bit of research. Uh, um, we have flexible seating in my classroom. They can sit on the floor. They can sit on a yoga ball. They can sit on stools, seats, bean bags. Their choice. If they want to bring something in that helps them focus, I'm fine with that. So I have a little more flexibility. Um, um, I offer my students sometimes playing music if, if they're uh, um, at their desk working, like on a project, or. Um, I offer the students if they want to work independently in a back room. So there's a lot of choices and I believe that's important because not all kids focus the same way. So I think um, 
Um, myself too, I was a student that loved uh, different ways of learning, not just sitting down and listening to the teacher. Um, I felt like sometimes I can do the work independently or it would have been great sitting down on the ground. Still to this day, I sit down, uh, I have a couch at my house, I like to sit down on the carpet. So I think that wide range of, um, of um, opportunities to learn is important for kids. And so um, it, offer, uh, it also lets the kids um, realize um, that learning takes place at different levels. So uh, there's no one size fits all. I think schools are designed for kids with ADHD and sort of not. Because a lot of our, the people of like nine people in our class have ADHD. And it's hard to focus and not easy because I always get sleepy and tired. But I have to admit to this, school is not built for eight kids with ADHD. It's 100% not. For teachers who have ADHD students, there are some cases where the student needs more time to finish a test or an assignment because we just can't focus enough to say we need to get this done and not daydream about something else that's happening outside the window or that's happening around, around them. It's kind of hard to live with that just in your head. Plus, not a lot of people know the pain of it. So just for you people out there that are like wanting to understand what ADHD is like, imagine a bunch of thoughts in your head and you don't know which one to choose and which one to say, all right, I'm gonna do this first. I get this now as an adult and I've got to wonder, you know, if at f almost 48 years old, if it took me that long to finally be able to recognize that I could not focus when I needed to focus, what is an eight-year-old supposed to do? What is a 13-year-old supposed to do? How are they supposed to have that, that level of, that ability to recognize that that's going on? Right. One of the things that my, you know, my son said is that, you know, schools are not designed for ADHD kids, and I entirely agree. So we gave the scales to three of our teachers here on staff, um, and we're going to review some of those results with all of you. But before we get into that, I do want to say that... Um, you can be very successful having ADHD. It's just a matter of learning how to manage your symptoms and understanding your symptoms in order to create a plan that works for you. Many adults can be very successful. They are great multitaskers as long as they have those organizational skills intact. That means that they are great at utilizing those skills and like writing things down, knowing what's next. If they get an idea, jotting it down so they can come back to it so they don't lose it. Many of them are very creative. Um, they can be very productive because most of them do have that energy portion. They have the drive to want to do um, the new task or whatever comes to mind. Um, but as long again as they know that they have to have a routine, they have to know what their triggers are, they have to know what their working environment needs to look like, they have to have those tools they need in order to be successful. So we are going to review uh, three of our teachers and their results. Our first one um, rated more on the hyperactivity portion of it. And what does that mean? The hyperactivity or someone who has, who tends to have more hyperactivity or uh, impulsivity um, tendencies they often fidget so with adults you will see that so with kids we see that they run but with adults it's a little more subtle so they're the ones who are constantly tapping their hands while you're in a meeting they're tapping their pencil they're fidgeting with their hands or they're fidgeting with paper they're tapping their foot or they're rocking back and forth some of it is very subtle but if you pay close attention they're the ones that are a little more restless during a long staff meeting um, they may have to leave or they may get a drink of water constantly or get up and move around, uh, walk around. Sometimes you might say, oh, I need to get up because of my back, but that's just a little, eh, sometimes they just need to do that. Just like kids, we encourage them to go get a drink of water. Adults need to get up and go to the bathroom, go to their classroom. They will get up and then come back. Um, they may talk out of turns. They're the ones that have a hard time just raising their hand and they'll just blurt 
I need this because whatever comes to mind again if they are not in a structured environment and staff in staff meetings sometimes you find that or we're just going on and on you know then they'll go on and on with it so they will blurt out um, they may you know the on the go thing is again it's just the ideas the rapid ideas that come to mind um, they might have a hard time waiting waiting their turn again it's the blurting out that's when you see it where they're just gonna blurt out they don't and it's okay so let me go back it's not that they don't see their colleagues raising their hand and waiting patiently it's literally that in their mind they need to say what's come they're not be discrediting anyone or they're not trying to jump in they really are just going with the flow and a thought came to mind and I'm gonna say it um, and again it's the interrupting they don't mean it and I think that's what everyone um, misunderstands is that they don't mean to interrupt they're not trying to be mean or malicious or inconsiderate of somebody else it's really about in that moment they're gonna interrupt because that's how they're working in that moment so I just received my results for ADHD and it says I'm hyperactive and have impulsivity. So it also says that I like to move a lot. That's very true. And it says that I um, am easily distracted. I'm just going one day and run into disaster. One day. Ugh. Uh, remember I came for the ADHD papers? Do you know where they're at? Oh, yeah. I completely forgot why you came in. Okay. And it says that I love to be out of my seat and I'm constantly wandering around. That is very true. So, the test is true. I am definitely hyperactive. I have a lot of energy. And I find that is a good thing. So, as a fourth grade teacher, I need to be on my feet a lot. And I'm constantly moving around my room checking my children. And I think being hyperactive helps me in class. I think it also helps me in the world. I'm a go-getter. I am someone who has no problems, you know, trying out for new things. I don't worry much and I will jump into things and I think that's very helpful. Having that energy, I'm never worn down by the children. I am, I can easily move from one subject to another and I'm just constantly ready to go. Also, um, I'm very creative. I have no problem coming up with crazy, crazy great ideas for my kids. I'm very successful. I have been working for 24 years in teaching. Um, I'm someone who travels a lot and I'm involved in a lot of different things. So I would say having all that energy is a good thing. I'm fine with my results. Definitely feel like being a hyperactive person has helped me be successful. So that is with uh, our hyperactivity and impulsivity. Um, Staff member, our other teacher, second teacher, um, she came more on the inattentive side, and we were not surprised um, given that um, you can have conversations with her and she's listening and she's totally doing what she's listening. And then a week later, you'll bring up the same topic and she may be like, Wait, I don't recall talking about that. And then you have to bring up, You remember we talked about that on this day and this day? Again, it wasn't her not being malicious, she just wasn't present. She's inattentive. She Need, if Again, if it's in an unstructured environment, she doesn't have what she needs to jot down her calendar, what's going on, you know, she's going to forget it. And it's not that she's being mean or malicious about it. Um, little careless mistakes often happen um, just because they're not paying attention to detail. In their mind, they're going to write down what comes to mind, what they need to know in that moment. And they may go back and look at it and say, okay, I'm missing information. Yeah, they probably are because they're not being, they're being careless with what they're writing down. Um, difficulty paying attention to tasks. Again, it's, it's different um, in regards to the one who's uh, more hyperactivity because they're constantly moving. This one's just kind of, they're the ones who drift off to La La Land and they're gazing at the wall or they're gazing this way or they're doing something else when they should be paying attention. So it's not, it, it looks a little bit different. Um, doesn't listen so again it's that one that I just it seems like they're not listening they are listening um, again it's just that they 
don't pay attention to the little details. So they'll say, I remember we had this conversation, but I don't remember the day, the time, when that's going to happen, or the details of the event. Um, an organization is a big one. You will often find that their space tends to be a little uh, less organized compared to others. Yes, we all tend to have clutter here and there, but you will go in there and they will say, I don't remember where I left this paper. I don't remember where I left this book. I know I put it down somewhere. And if you look around, there's usually stuff just piled up around the room or things on the floor that just uh, because they don't lack, they lack the organizational skills. So it's really difficult for them to go back. They're not the ones who are going to have everything filed nice and neatly in a file cabinet and let me get that for you and we're going to be awesome. Um, they will lose things. That's the misplacing of things. Again, you will see that with, I place this book here, I place this paper here. Oh no, where did this go? I know I had it here. Uh, I don't know where my phone is. I don't know where I left my keys. I don't know. I left that it's the disorganization. It's the leaving everything, not knowing where to put everything. Um, and you just get just easily distracted. Wait, I need to check the time. I know my phone is here somewhere. Has anyone seen my phone? Yeah. Right there. Where? I know it. Right there. Okay, so I am Mr. Bourgeois. I am Mrs. Bourgeois's husband. Um, I'm looking at the ADHD report scale. I am not shocked to find out that my wife has a little bit of ADHD. She did score that she is inattentive. Am I shocked? No. Um, I knew this about her before I married her. Um, but you have to think about the other things about, uh, about Mrs. Bourgeois as well. Is She's really, really gifted in many other ways. Um, ADHD does not define her. Her inattentiveness does not define her. She's a, a valuable resource to have. She's a great person. She's a great teacher. And um, she's really funny. So if you ever need someone to laugh with or to, she's your person. So am I shocked? No. ADHD seems to run in our family. So I personally do not have it, I don't think. I haven't taken the test. Am I afraid to take the test and say I'm ADHD? Probably not, because I don't think there's anything wrong to say that you have or have um, ADHD because it's just one of the things that we are live with, live, yeah, we live with now. So the last one is our, uh, our last teacher. He was the combo type. So I touched upon the two symptoms and he basically had both, both of the, the symptoms. So he was hyperactivity and um, uh, hyperactivity, impulsivity along with the inattentive. And it really does soon and well because he's very productive. They're always, always, always on the go. Um, and he does a little bit of everything that we just talked about. So I got my results back and um, I filled this out myself so that this is based off of one um, particular scale, just one and one analysis off of me. So I want to get another one to kind of get a, a more balanced um, um, results. But by just one result, I uh, was had a combo. So I do have adult ADHD. So um, from what it, the scale is, I find it a little bit, um, not, not a, a little bit surprising. I find it a little bit surprising because I think I would fall more under the um, hyperactivity than the ADD. But um, you know, I don't totally disagree. I don't, it's not something that I would uh, disagree on. Um, but I believe that whatever I have, I believe, I strongly believe in strategies. Because I, like again, I don't disagree with it. I mean, and I don't see that as a negative thing. I just, you know, I think we, um, um, me as a teacher can understand that we all have our learning abilities and, and our learning curve and, uh, and our different uh, learning modalities. And I think we should respect that uh, as kids. So I think we should respect that as um, teachers too. Um, and I think that's a great thing too because me as a teacher I think a lot of kids can maybe relate because it's like here I am I am a college graduate I have a job I have I'm married I have kids I have um, health benefits so I am surviving and I, I'm doing everything I, I believe I'm a successful teacher because of the projects I'm doing in classroom and from the feedback I get from my admin and from my parents and from my kids so I believe I'm doing a good job I would never find that as a, um, a uh, as it hindering me or I would never use it as an excuse. I, I think I, it might be a strength for me because now I can tell the kids, look, we have these differences about ourselves, but what we need to do is find the strategies in order to survive. You know, I know that I'm gonna lose papers. Once we lost um, uh, his, we lost the script. I mean, at the script, our, 
to for our grades where our grades were and we had to find that and we had to redo it because we couldn't find it so what could i do to not lose papers i know that i'm gonna um, be off task uh, um and 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 so how can i uh, quickly gain myself so how can i recognize these little triggers so that way it helps me out so again i think we all have it in a certain way but um but i've learned a lot of strategies to cope with over the years and and by far I, I know my weaknesses and I'm still not I still understand that I'm still working through it so it's like it's it's part of me and then I I enjoy it and I and I think it's a strength and 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 a weakness in some form so but I am not surprised at all So I really don't know what it's like to have children without ADHD. Um, and so if you do have a kid with ADHD, my um, thought would be to read everything you can on what ADHD is. And um, if you can, talk to somebody who has an ADHD child as well. And um, talk to a doctor and if you if I could give anybody advice about anything, it would be before you decide to put your child on medication or after you decide to put your child on medication, don't let them be a guinea pig and let them try medication after medication to have them swab their cheek and test their DNA because it is miserable. And, um, it's harder to watch your child go through it than it is for you to go through it yourself. So it was painful to watch him go through um, trial and error of medication. So definitely look into that if you're thinking about um, putting your ADHD child on medication. During the process of documenting ADHD, I have found that we aren't really attention deficit. We are attention deficit different. More people need to understand how ADHD minds and people can work and we're not all the same and schools need to develop a better way of understanding ADHD and their ADHD students. If we spend more time accepting and learning to tolerate the unique gift of ADHD people, maybe then less people will feel embarrassed or different. Robin Williams was in many ways the poster child of ADHD, though it was never confirmed that he had it. He said that you're only given a little spark of madness, you mustn't lose it. My adventure of finding other people with ADHD has been a good one, but what it was intended to be was ADHD in my family. But as I filmed more, it got a lot bigger than that. My path grew all these twists and turns and all these other different directions. Part of it was just stumbling upon it with my news crew, but the other half was just being able to wander around my campus with my camera. So my, my path has come to an end, and a new story I start, and a new idea. After all, I am ADHD. <laughs> mm-hmm.